Hello everyone, and welcome to this video guideline for the final project, part two. In the first part, we covered the uh, essay option for the final project, and in this part, we'll be covering the other the other options for a final project. So it's 25% of your grade, and it's due, as I said, in three phases, the final project proposal, the rough draft final project, and the final project itself. And you can take a look at the actual written guidelines for more details on what's expected with each of these uh, for these particular projects. So, as I said before, we have you have one of five options for this project. Uh, we talked about the final essay, and in this presentation we are going to talk about the Wikipedia entry, LibriVox contribution, digital presentation, and open option. So, Again, if you're going to pursue one of these, I highly recommend you talk to me as soon as possible uh, so we can get you started and make sure what you produce is a really great project is a really great project that uh, others can use or can view or can enjoy. All right, so let's get into the different options. So the first is the Wikipedia entry, and for this, students would find a written work by one of the authors that we've read this semester, and they would create and or develop a Wikipedia entry on the writing, its content, meaning, and its importance. Uh, students may also find a poorly developed entry and further develop it. From there, students would... Um, in order to do this, students will acquire the instructor's permission before moving forward and must limit their choices to exploring works written by the authors explored in this course. Now to be clear, that doesn't mean you can only write about the things that we've read in this course, but only things written by authors whom we've read. So, in other words, you can write about a short story by Edgar Allan Poe that we didn't read in this course, but you still have to write about some work written by an author that we've read in this course. All right, so just keep that in mind, is that you're not limited to only that which we've read in this course. You're limited to the authors that we've read in this course. So ultimately, you're going to, for this, you want to create a substantial Wikipedia entry that is researched and written by you um, and has a variety of resources there the, or, you know, has a variety of material about the content, the meaning, its importance, all of those things. So this would require some research. It would also require being familiar with Wikipedia, creating an account, uh, becoming familiar with how they do, how they create entries. Uh, we often joke around or we, we devalue Wikipedia, but I find when students do this assignment, they get a lot of respect for people that do actually go on and put something of value onto Wikipedia. Um, I think it's also important because now the student's work is going to be read by other people, is out there to be read and to be valued and to be edited. Um, and all of those are important things to recognize and to experience. So, in terms of evaluating uh, this project, uh, I'm looking at the ability for students to research and gather credible sources that they are going to incorporate into their entry, to discuss the, the text in clear, analytical, and articulate ways, because again, this is going to be on a public forum that other people are going to want to use and to look for for reference, to provide a solid and substantial contribution to Wikipedia of some 1,200 to 1,500 words. So again, your writing needs to be between 1,200 and 1,500 words. You should be making sure that you, you know, cover a lot of different things within that. And that should be 1,200 or 1,500, again, of your own words. Um, you shouldn't be taking, or if you do take quotes from elsewhere, you should be quoting them, and you shouldn't be using other people's words. Uh, again, making sure you properly uh, do your own writing here. And then the warning with this is just that People do undermine or undervalue Wikipedia. They assume it's easy to go on and add stuff. And while that may be true, for you to create something that sticks on Wikipedia as well as being worthy of a, of a passing grade means you're going to have to familiar, sufficiently familiarize yourself with the site and its, ex its expectations. Uh, typically students who don't do this don't do well on this assignment. You do have to get a sense of the creation process, what's expected of you, and you know there are gui the, the, the written guidelines for this uh, give you some places to look at for that. 
LibriVox contribution. Okay, so for this assignment, students uh, are going to find uh, a work from one of the authors uh, that has not been recorded, create a recording of it, and put it on the LibriVox LibriVox uh, website and write a reflective essay. So for those that don't know, LibriVox is a is a website where uh, volunteers create audio narrations of works in the public domain and they put them up on the LibriVox website for others to enjoy. So they're in MP3 format. In fact, in this course, I link to several uh, LibriVox recordings. That's all done by volunteers. And so for this assignment, what students are, are going to do is to find a writing by one of the authors that we've read in the course and create a recording around it. So very similar to Wikipedia, you don't have to choose one of the readings from the course, but any, any writing that you choose must be from one of the authors in this course. So just as a kind of here's just as some details about this assignment what you will need to do uh, you'll need to do one or more works so that in total it equates to at least 15 minutes of recording this recording needs to be at least 15 minutes uh, I feel that's an appropriate level and I should warn you that you're gonna have to record it several times my expectation around this as a recording is there's going to be a level of it should be read clear and consistent throughout uh, read a work in its entirety. So you can't just choose part of a story or chapters. Uh, that's not acceptable. You need to read an entire work. So that's an entire short story, an entire essay. It's not sufficient just to read the first chapter, uh, even if that equates to 15 minutes. So be aware of that in what you choose to read. Limit choices to exploring works written by authors within this course. So again, as I said, you need to read or you, your selection should be something written by an author that we explore in this course. Uh, for this assignment, you do not need to buy recording equipment. And you should be able to do this if you have a computer with an internal microphone. I would recommend a headset microphone because that allows for less background noise to seep in and I'm happy to lend one out if a student really wants to do this but can't afford one or doesn't have one. I do know that some students who are into video games they already have a headset microphone uh, but if you don't I'm willing to work with you to make sure you can get one if you really want to use one for this assignment. You do need to perform some research around the story and the author to get a sense of the story's history and significance, uh, to also get a sense of how the characters sound, or, or just to be able to smoothly read this without interruption or hesitation. And when all is done, you do need to write a 600 plus word essay that examines, or I'm sorry, that discusses your experience in choosing, researching, and narrating the particular writings and how it changed your understanding and experience of the story. So it's not just creating the, the LibriVox recording and getting it up on the site, which is a process. And again, the written guidelines identify how to, where you need to go to I, to work through that process. But you need to write that reflective essay to help think about what you did and how you did it and how does that change your understanding and appreciation of, of whatever it is that you're reading. I should also note, um, if you're going to do poetry, which is perfectly fine, you're probably going to need to do several poems, uh, depending on what, what poem you choose or which poems you choose. And so keep that in mind. If you're talking, if you want to do poems, then you're going to have to choose and create several different poems. Uh, you're going to have to choose and read several different poems. So evaluation for this clear, projective, and mistake-free recording of the written work. So that's that's going to be a big thing is making sure that your narration is lively, is clear, and that there aren't any mistakes in it. Proper introduction, introduction material. Uh, when you get into LibriVox and are exploring the site and, and creating your recording, each LibriVox recording has a brief introduction, which usually identifies the author, the the work and that this is a LibriVox recording and it's in the public domain. The, the material is on the website so that you can clarify but you need to have that in order for it to be accepted onto LibriVox. Um, the, the recording has been added to a specific collection. Keep this in mind that there is a process around getting your recording onto the site and if 
you do not follow that process it does not get added and if it does not get added that's a actual def that's going to be detrimental to your grade uh, you want to make sure you follow the procedure to get it added to the collection and a well-written reflection that provides insight on the process and the experience the digital presentation so for this assignment, students would create a digital presentation using a video recording to create a 10 to 15 minute digital presentation that tackles some aspect of the course. The presentation should be fairly well constructed and clearly communicate. Uh, and clearly communicate. Students are encouraged to be creative, but not at the cost of providing solid insight and, and ideas. So some examples might be a thorough discussion of one to two works in the course tied to major themes. Discussing a theme tied to many different works within the course, um, you can you know you can certainly play around with this, and I want students to play around with this, but we do want to make sure that you maintain the integrity of the final project of providing strong analysis. And in order to do this record, students have a lot of different options around this. You can do a screencast like I've done for these videos. You can use, you certainly could use something like, you know, your own, if you have a smartphone, you could use the camera there to really create um, and do some interesting works. You could even do scene interpretation or scene reinterpretation. Uh, you could have a lot of fun with this and still provide that good creative, that good solid um, analytical background but you can you could create in a lot of different ways whether it's recording on the screen or recording with a camera if you have your own camera um, you want to think about the different ways you could do this YouTube has a lot of resources that you could use so again you could actually create a video using the YouTube uh, YouTube uh, video editor and the like so evaluation around this is the quality and consistency of the digital presentation the clarity of ideas topics and themes discussed and the ability to engage in deep discussion of content within the presentation. I also would like this, you know, I, I want this to be something that other students can look at and to enjoy and, and appreciate. So be aware that this is this video is in likelihood or should be able to be shared with other people in the class so that you can hear from your peers what they think about your, your video. Um, if you're comfortable with it, by all means, it, you know, a place to put it on would be YouTube. If not, you can put it into your Google Drive and share it out like that. I uh, share it out from there. But I I don't me, I don't think in terms of evaluating this project, it needs to be, you know, a Spielberg type film. But it should be clear. There should be attention, you know, attention to detail. There should be uh, strong analysis and ideas coming out of the presentation. Um, and also, you know, I would want to see where relevant the range of works covered and the depth of uh, the depth of which a work is covered. So if you're only going to talk about one or two works, I want to make sure those works are covered in detail. Uh, if you're covering a range of works, I want to make or if you're not covering one or two works in depth, then I really do want to see a good range of works. And what I mean by range is, you know, it should be different authors, it should be uh, different time periods, different types of works covered. I want to see some diversity in, in what you cover if you're going for range as opposed to depth. All right, the open option is pretty simple. Um, if none of if none of those first four options appeal to you, then by all means, pitch me something. If you have an idea for a final project that can really illustrate your skills, your learning, your abilities, at, you know, towards at the end of this course, then tell me what you think that that would look like and I do encourage you if you take this option to meet with me or to talk with me prior to spring break uh, so that we can together work out what the expectations are around the assignment and how it will be evaluated and to be clear this is not an easy option um, it means that the student really does have to identify what is the concept that they want to do and work with the instructor to determine what success looks like. Um, it's actually, it probably is going to be a little bit harder than some of the other assignments because it requires the student to really think about, you know, how do they prove, what are they going to do, how are they going to do it. Um, 
but I think, you know, in the past when I've done this, I've seen some really great ideas come from students. So I always like having this open option because it, it empowers you as the student to say, here's how I think I should be evaluated. Or here's the project that I think really represents my work in this class. All right, so just a reminder, you know, this project is 25% of your grade. You have those three pro those three phases, the proposal, the rough draft, and the final project. Uh, and those are listed in the syllabus and you have some time in between each and I will be giving feedback as you get as you go through each process. So with all of that in mind, please let me know if you have any questions and thank you very much for watching.